All right, all right, all right. Now, I've got all of our new traders on, which is awesome. So this was a little, small, exclusive call that we wanted to run for all of the uh, traders. So if you which is naughty and not on mute. Um, all right, guys, so welcome. I'm really excited for, so we've just got a couple more people that I'm admitting, some late stragglers, always happens. But um, guys, we have Marky Miles on our Tuesday night call tonight. So if you guys do not know him, which a lot of you will not because you are brand spanking new, he is the uh, founder of Trade House. So just imagine legit that, a trade house. <laughs> and he's like created all these little empires all around the bloody world, um, doing his thing, educating people on smart money trading concepts. So um, this guy... Ooh. Can we all make the unmuted, pretty please? Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So tonight, the last couple of calls, we've really done the background work on money mindset, psychology, um, all those good things to you know get ourselves primed and ready in the mindset. As we know, trading is a massive um, psychological journey, um, and you know you're only going to become as good of a trader as you become as a human. I uh, learned that from Mike. So. Um, in saying that, you know, tonight it's going to be a jam packed call. We have got, I reached out to you all to see what questions you had, um, to see what we can get answered for you. Now there are some brand spanking new people on here. That's been in here like a couple of days to, um, probably the max is a month on here, which is super cool. Like awesome. You guys are on. Some of you are even stock traders that are on here, um, jumping on and wanting to learn more about what it is we do as a trading community. Um, and there's no other guy on here that I want to introduce to you guys more than Mike Miles from the Trade House. So, Mike, are you there? I'm going to bring you on, then I'm going to bring on the questions. Yep. Can you hear me? Such a loud and good. Perfect. What's up, everyone? Have hope everybody's having a good day, evening for you guys. But we have a lot of questions to get to. So ready for all of the rapid fire for it. But thank you guys so much for your time. I hope that this will help in of course, if you have any questions all along from anything that we talk about, you know, feel free to ask as well. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, guys, please write in the chat. Um, if, you, if there's something you are not understanding and you want something elaborated on a little bit further. Um, so first, we have got so many good, absolutely weapon, like great questions to go over tonight. So first of all, as I want to start with um, is... I just want to give a quick congratulations to Franks. Now, Mikey, I don't know if you know this yet. Um, Mikey, our guy out in Belgium, just received his FTMO certification. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Congrats. Guys, let's go. You don't know what the FTMO is. It's basically um, a, how do I explain it? A certification basically from a prop firm where you can, you know, once you've proved yourself with risk management, um and just being basically a badass trader you get funded six figures and you get to keep 70 percent of the profits like it is a massive massive thing so um congrats out there like he's been trading a year he's only like how old 21 22 or something crazy like that's incredible freaking beast and guys i really just want to like you know the smart money concepts that we're here with the trade house like the trade house gang have had more ftmo funded traders than any other group right i can't stress to you guys enough how how amazing that is i mean it's all him he's done the work but yeah i wanted to um give a quick shout out to that so let's get straight into the question so question number one this has come around a couple of times so i've just like dot pointed it can we just make sure everyone is muted as you come on in um so question one is i finished the course um it's now time for me to get on the charts and i'm feeling a little overwhelmed with what to do as my first put a call when I come, when I'm coming onto trading view, my demo is set up. What do I do first? There is a lot to um, answer in that one. I, I mean, initially I can think of like a few different ways of answering that because you know, why it, where is the overwhelmingness coming from? Is it is it from the strategy? Is it from, you know, actually looking at the markets and applying it? Is it, I, I'm trying to understand how to better answer the question. Huh? 
implementation. Okay. All right. So, and yeah, this was a question that was asked a few times. Uh, I'm pretty sure as well, but it's just, a, uh, okay. So transferring what it is that you've been taught into application. For me, personally, what I've always tried to do is just keep that simple in that, in, in that sense of the same thing that is going on today, tonight, for example, is the same thing that's going to be going on tomorrow night. So if you literally just got started with it and you were just now, you know, transferring over to the new thing, first, please understand that that's absolutely normal. You know, it, it, it takes a little bit of stepping into, so to speak you'll get over that initial hump. But in order to help combat that, in my opinion as well, it's just keeping the, the fundamentals in front of everything, meaning good environment, good headspace, good just in, in the best situation that you can possibly be in to not give yourself anxiety, to not overcomplicate it, to cause that actual emotion from happening. To me, that obviously really helps with it as well. But then, of course, you know, making sure that you also understand as well that that transition is normal. I think, you know, all of us have gone through it. But then the second part of that question was, I'm sorry, I didn't catch it, was it was about TradingView and then using a demo account? Yes, I, so I'm sorry. I didn't... Their demo set up so they're on TradingView. They finished the course. Now, when they're coming onto the chart for the first time, um, basically like what is the next step into like identifying stuff? Is it like a top down analysis? Like, what are we doing first? Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, for, okay. So from that point forward, just again, just like what SJ said, there's brand new traders. So I guess I should just go ahead. Oh, oh can I? Yeah. yeah. Just an FYI, guys, it is like 6.30 a.m. for Mike. So he's <laughs> doing non-stop trading stuff. So it is. a bit gassed out, but he's good. All right. So here we go. All righty, right, all right. So from the beginning of everything, I guess you could say, uh, I guess to try to keep it as simple as I possibly can, yes, you definitely want to start on whatever pair that it is that you decide to choose to start from what is referred to as top down. As we're looking at the higher time frames, of course, you're trying to understand where's the market going on a much bigger scale, kind of what's going on in the world, of course, is, is the dollar higher, is gold higher, is oil higher, is lower, you know, if it hit zero, whatever the case may be, this is where you're going to obviously start to find the overall direction of the market. The trend being your friend kind of statement that goes along with it. But nonetheless, when you are obviously on the higher time frames, whether it's the monthly, the weekly, or the daily, you are obviously looking for where the highest points and where the lowest points in the market to start off with in, in comparison to where obviously the market is at right now. So take a look at gold here, for example you will see that gold is obviously coming back to uh, 2012, 2011-ish highs. And this is the highest that it's obviously been on this chart right here as well. And this is important. Why did that happen there in 2012? If you guys remember the mine calendar, uh, doomsday prepping and the dollar and all of that stuff, that was all happening around 2012. Of course, this, uh, as we can of course see here, made the highest high, at least on TradingView or any of the brokers that we can trade. It isn't the absolute high to be clear, but just on this chart that we can see right here, starting on the higher time frame, we just want to be able to identify things like that. So again, gold, look at where it is right now. Very, very, you know, coming to the to the absolute top of it, coming for all of the highs and coming for all of this back here. Those are the kinds of things that you want to be identifying on higher time frames and how much it has moved, how quick is it moved, all of those just time essentials is really what that comes down to. And as, of course, as you guys will learn from Jenna and Zach and all of that, as you break down into the lower time frames, this is, of course, when you start to really, really start looking for the moves that are kind of on the day-by-day -day basis. This, of course, depends on how you're, of course, trading the market and what you decide to do and what you feel most comfortable with. But at least for me, what can I, what I can say at least on it is that on an intraday or uh, the 
you know, a day by day approach of trading. What I'm looking for is, of course, with the daily candle as we get jumped down from, I kind of skipped over the weekly, but just to keep the answer kind of concise here, um, wanting to see on the day by day candles where is the actual play going to be happening at if that candle is going to present an opportunity. When I'm looking for entries, and I know that this is another question as well, so I'll kind of start to answer it now as well. When we're looking at the higher time frames, for example, daily, this is going to be a higher time frame in comparison to the pair, or I'm sorry, to the time frames that I actually look at, which if you come on to my session on go live and things like that, you will find me mostly on the hourly. But when I'm looking at the hourly chart here, I just want to be clear, this is a little bit of a I, I, I don't want to use the word advanced, but I can see the daily candles right here on the uh, hourly chart. It's from session break to session break, but still nonetheless, I can still see the high and the low, and I know where the weeks start and end. So it's just, I guess, experience for that point, but you know that is personally what I do. But when I'm looking at the daily, which is again, the same thing that I was just showing you on the hourly chart, I want to see where that daily candle is obviously going to be heading towards. Now, I know that there's another, a, a bunch of questions about imbalance and mitigation and a lot of the vocabulary, and I can answer those for you, um, you know, one by one if you'd like, but obviously that is all answered in, in through that. So if again, you're trying to apply it, the words themselves aren't always what I focus on. What I care more about is exactly what I'm explaining to you here, is the price action of what is actually happening. So take a look at what's happening right now, for example, on gold. What do you see happening in this one particular candle? Now, again, granted, it isn't done. It is printing. This candle is still printing right now, meaning it's, of course, not closed. But what is it saying? What is the story with it right now? Obviously, we know that this is one of the highest highs Again, since like 2011, every single pip that it moves up past this little point right here, we know that that's happening. So what is this candle, you know, potentially looking at? Well, to keep a long story short, I think they're selling to buy right now. And if they're going to be selling to buy for, again, a bunch of reasons that, again, we'll kind of get into as the questions continue to go, I see that on the daily time frame. So now I transition down to the lower time frame, and now I'm starting to look for these entries that are obviously going to coincide with that bias. So when I'm looking at the hourly chart, I'm waiting for the London session to open up. And then as it starts to open up, I want to see where the play is actually going to end up happening, either sometime in the middle of the London session or into the New York session kind of at the open of it and when London and New York are open at the same time is usually a really good hot zone. Those are the times that I'm usually looking for for these entries to happen again off of the confirmations of these higher time frames. And then you just repeat that process essentially for all of the other time frames. Like if you were trading on the 15 minute, for example, then the hourly would be considered a higher time frame. So it doesn't really matter which time frame we're we're speaking on, whether it's the one minute, again, 15 minute, hour, weekly, daily. That same thing that I just explained to you is pretty much what you're going to be doing on every scale. The higher the time frame, the bigger the picture you get to see. So once you have all of that identified, then you jump down to the lower time frames, at least in my approach, to be clear as well. There's a multitude of ways to obviously trade. But in this sense, we're waiting for the price action to happen on a day-by-day -day basis and seeing where that opportunity is going to present itself, uh, again, during London and or New York. So I know that was a lot, <laughs> I, but try to knock some of the answers down because we do have a lot. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. If you guys understood that, just chuck a one in the chat, please. Um, now, Jess, um, Jess Gonzalez. I know it was a lot. Can you confirm? So Jess has a three part question here. Um, okay. How do you select the prices for the QPs and in what time frame? Um, yeah. And so that, that can, that, that one's easy really quick. So, uh, the, the, the points in the market are just a grid. Now I did a, 
the whole grid session tonight. So one thing that all of you guys can write down for any of you guys that, you know, couldn't make it to the session today, the one I did, it, um, what is it, seven hours ago now? It's the newest video on my channel on Go Live. I break all of that down. But just to answer, and I did that tonight, but I'll go ahead and answer your question right here. How do you find them? Is of course by the grid. So gold, 1800, 1805, 1810, 1815, AUD, JPY, 7500, 7550, 7450, UJ, 10750, 108, 10850, so on and, and like that. And what time frame? It doesn't matter because the grid is the same nonetheless. So the time frame itself doesn't really matter because again 10750 is going to be as relevant on the one minute chart as it would be on the monthly chart for and of course everything in between so time frame doesn't really matter but you'll be able to find the grid on any chart that you look at once you just again grab one whole number like 107 on uj.000 then you can just scale out from that point on again on any chart Awesome, thank you. Um, Jess, I was on the call, but did not quite get it. Just chuck us in the chat if you, okay, got it, got it. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so the we've gone over the whole top-down analysis. There was multiple questions on that. Um, guys, just do go back to Jenna's recordings um, in Zach's channel. There's six or seven videos there. Watch them again. Um, if you don't understand, just hit her up on her live calls as well. Um, so now the next question is, do I trade news? So for me, like I remember um, I was on one of the trade house guys calls and when you think about the concepts that we're trading guys in terms of smart money concepts, institutional concepts, right? News is really just another excuse for the banks to put price where they want it to go and who, who controls the media guys, right? So just think a little bit about this. Um, yeah, we do. So Mike, I'm going to, you can elaborate on that one. Yeah, news is just another opportunity. There's nothing to fear against news. I think the stigma that, you know, oh, news is risky. You guys, if you get into a trade literally right now at this moment, in the next five minutes, whatever pair you're buying, for example, could drop a thousand pips right now. I mean, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what the reason is. News is the excuse that they use as the economic calendar but again an earthquake for example could move sorry could move the market down right now against you so how is it any more or less risky does that make sense even though i guess you could assume that news is you know has a higher probability of moving uh really aggressively as opposed to you know if an earthquake were to happen god forbid for example but um there really isn't any more or less inherent risk. In fact, it's just more opportunity for you to be able to capitalize on anything. So if you're new to news though, the one thing that I will say is do not trade news live on a live account. If you genuinely have never traded news before, in fact, if you are just simply new to trading, you should have a demo account just at all times. At all times, you should definitely have one. You shouldn't even, honestly, I'd argue you shouldn't even have a live account right now, but I'm just being realistic. Make sure that you have that. And news is one of the best things to trade on specifically a demo account. Uh, one that you're actually trying to grow as well, just so again, you can tap into a little bit more of the experience of going through news and again, how fast the market can move. That kind of comes back to the other question as well. Another good point to kind of tap on here is that <clears throat> when we are, uh, you know, trying to grab that experience away or I guess apply the experience that we've been taught, if you're trading on an account, for example, for news that doesn't really matter, like you literally make one on MetaTrader 4, like right there on the spot, and then you just, you know, trade news because it happens to be coming out at that particular time, that isn't going to help you because you're not gonna actually gain any experience from just creating a quick demo account real quick and push, you know, pushing a blue or a red button. You actually have to participate in order for this to transfer over to a live account. So even when you ask for a demo account, again, this is coming back to the first question, 
this will also translate from a demo account to a live account. So you're jumping from education to a demo account. There is also going to be demo to live. And again, there shouldn't be. But again, being in reality here, it a lot of people can look at it differently. Oh, it's a demo account, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, it's a live account, so it really, really matters. That is the problem in and of itself. So you will find again through experience, just again, quickly coming back to that first question that that is another thing that you will absolutely go through. Everybody goes through it when you know, for, when your brain knows that those blue and red numbers actually mean something, it is a, it is a lot different if you treat a demo account just as truly demo. It's not going to benefit you that way. So make sure you're doing that as well. Amazing. So Jenna and I have done a, a try, uh, what is it? A psychology call and a trading plan call based upon, um, you know, demo and uh, live trading as well. So just on that note, um, there are a couple of people here that are so eager to trade live. Um, <laughs> if they're not going to listen to mm -hmm. me, they're going to listen to you. So share with them why, like the importance of demo and to just not be in a rush to go live yet. If you here, and I'll, I'll stop sharing. If you, um, if, you know, for whoever that is, did you learn to not touch fire by being burned? And that's just a genuine question. If you can think about it, to you know, in your own personal life, not just with touching fire, but in general, are you the person that has to endure pain to learn from an experience to be able to stop doing whatever that is? That is what I had to do. I made a live account before I even quit my job. And then I quit my job and literally cut off my source of income, had to try to turn that live account into something unbelievable. This completely backfired, of course, cost me way more money, didn't have a source of income, had, you know, had to you know, there's a whole story with that, but I'm not going to go into it. The point is, is that I'm again, going to be honest with you guys. You are either going to hear what so many people are going to tell you, like what I'm telling you right now of their own personal burn, so to speak, of the lesson that they had to endure in order to realize, wait, it, there is no need to jump the gun on this at all. Because First of all, again, trading your desire to get into to start live trading right now is probably prescribed by something that is going on in your life bills, rent, living situation, whatever the case may be. So, whatever exterior pressure is hitting you, that isn't going to be solved by trading, especially when you're brand new. This is not about flipping money. I'll tell you right now, it is possible to flip money, but is it consistent? Absolutely not. You can push the blue or the red button on an over leveraged trade and win. It is completely possible. But if you want to dictate your success off of that idea, it's going to end up in catastrophic losses. So live accounts, if you're not going to, here, if you really want to have a live account, go in with $50. If you can't do anything with $50, you're not going to do anything with $100. You're not going to do anything with $1,000. You're not going to do anything higher. So start on a very, 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 very small number and do not put any more money into it until you learn about risk management and how many trades do you think it takes to blow a $50 account? I, th I would guess 220, give or take, maybe 230 off the top of my head with just easy math. 220 trades with a $50 account to lose all 50, you know, dollars of that account once it's operating that the correct way. So live accounts, when you are brand new, honestly, they're only going to burn you. That's the easiest way to say it. They one way or another, because if you don't know what you don't know, you're going to make a decision that is going to cause a loss that is so big that it outweighs any wins that you had prior to that. And again, even your account balance, blowing your account is what it's referred to here. 
want your, your, just as much as you have the ability to make the right decision, you have just as much to make the wrong decision. So one over leveraged trade can cost you. Just remember that. Think about that. So think about the management that comes along with it. So. For sure. It, um, you know, so many traders, when we, we talked about this in our call the other day about, you know, taking trades as if you had a, you know, say $200, $200,000 account, not just because it's a demo or just because you've got a $100 or $200 account, like take trades because they're quality, not just because you want to chuck a trade in. Yeah. Um, also when it yep. comes to, um, like your risk as well, please keep your risk tight. Um, I was not going to drop any names <laughs> talking to one of our guys um, about, you know, risking, you know, maybe 1% on each trade. But if you are putting that on, if you're doing like 10 trades a day, for example, and you're taking hits, that's still like your legit 10% a day. Like that's mm -hmm. ludicrous. So um, over leveraging, you know, leverage is super, super powerful. So if you don't know how to use it, open a new account for really low leverage. So you have, you know, less. I, to I just want to add one thing to that. If you fail to do exactly what SJ said, then the conversation about why isn't trading working stops there. Because if that isn't met, nothing else matters. Nothing. It doesn't style, chart, strategy, theory, risk management. Like, well, it is risk management, but literally nothing else matters. That is where the conversation ends if, if you fail to do that one thing. Because if you don't, you expose yourself to losing a ton of work. Yeah. And I don't say that to scare you. I say that to be real with you because, again, you will learn that one way or the other. Yeah. So, um, in turn, so Jess, how much would you recommend a risk per trade, Bryson? How much leverage would you? So, remember, guys, leverage is capital provided by your broker, right? So, for example, if you are using a 1 to 10 rate of leverage and you've got $1,000 in your trading account, you can trade ten thousand dollars worth of currency pair, so that's going to maximize your 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 profits or losses by a factor of ten. Okay, so if you have a um you know an account of one thousand and you've got a one hundred to one leverage, you've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of capital to play with. So it's a very powerful tool, but if you don't know how to use it, um, ten it'll eat you up. Yeah, it's gonna freaking destroy you. All mm. right. So um, in terms of we had a. Where did my questions go? Um, so the next question is, there was one about, uh, there was another one in the, in the chat about take profits. Um, you know, best areas to take profit basically, yeah. You know, equal highs, equal lows, imbalances, other IC candles, but Mike, can you uh, elaborate on that as well? So yeah, take <coughs> profits is something that has been asked quite frequently. Um, and then if you want to roll off that onto how to use Fibonacci as a brand newbie, because there's two people asking about just how the frick do I use that tool? Okay. All right. So when it comes to take profit, there's two paths that can be taken. One of them is structure based, meaning where should you take profit? And the conversation for one path is, oh, okay, well, that's the structure. So if I were to sell right here, just for example, I would want to take profit here because this is obviously where the low is or vice versa or anything like that. I don't personally do that. To me, all I care about is looking for my piece of the pie. So my personal take profits are math driven instead of structure driven. They are risk management driven. If your lot size is obviously um, congruent with what's in your account and what you are going for, then you're obviously, whatever your lot size is, of course, is going to dictate how far away your take profit is, or it, at least for me, let me, let me put that to me, how big or small my lot size is will then dictate how far the take profit is away from the entry. The reason for that is because wherever the take profit is at is not about trying to catch the entire move. That is what I stopped doing. Why, and this is me, again, to be clear, my argument to this is why do you feel the need to catch literally the entire move? 
-hmm. when you can get exactly what you need done with whatever amount of pips that you are, you know, obviously going for. Obviously, I'm not going to be going for like 150 pips for take profit on an intraday basis because that's just, uh, you know, obviously silly. But looking for a smaller, it depends on, of course, like a scalping would have its own number. Intraday has its own number. Position trading, swing trading would have their own numbers as well. But as long as obviously the pip number is within range of how much on average, your whatever chart you're looking at moves, then to me, it makes sense that, okay, yeah, it could definitely move, I don't know, 100 pips over the course of the day. But if you can find exactly what you want out of 47 and then be done at 47 pips, that is what I would rather do as opposed to, again, saying, well, yeah, this is probably the absolute high, for example, and my take profit's going to be down here because I want the entire move. That is not what I do. My lot size is from, from any kind of risk management calculator, the lot size then determines what the stop and what the take profit are. Because obviously the lot size is how much you're putting on, on the table you know, from your own account, right? So however much I'm willing to lose and however much I'm willing to gain is congruent with obviously how much I'm putting down at the table at once. So take profit can be smaller, it can be bigger, usually ranges anywhere from, I don't know, 15 to like 50 pips, I, I probably 20, 20 to 50 pips, usually depends on how many trades I take or what of course is happening in the market on that particular day. If three charts look good, if only one chart looks good, you know, that it, it changes, honestly, on a day by day basis of, again, how many trades are, again, what the lot size is, but Nonetheless, when I do the risk management from my account to whatever lot size it is, let's just say it's a 0.5, for example, but I decide that I want to take two trades, then of course those two trades would end up being 0.25s. Does that make sense? So I do the initial math, but then if I choose to break down that math and take three trades, two trades, five trades, whatever that is, then that original math ends up getting, you know, again, divided again into those lot size or yeah, into those lot sizes, into those trades that then dictate, of course, the take profit and all of that. So hopefully that makes sense, but it's math driven for me instead of, um, you know, structure driven. If you don't know how much you're going for and you're just putting a take profit somewhere in the market, just because that's, you know, potentially where the market will go to, and then you should take profit. What does that profit mean? How much is it? How much were you going for? Do you even know if you're, this is again, just the thoughts that run through my head with it. Like if you just set it up here at the structure high, well, that's great. But what does that really mean in regards to your account and what matters most, which is your account and it growing, not how many pips you can catch. This isn't a game about how many pips you can catch. It's about how much each pip is worth that you're actually catching in versus how much you're actually losing, of course. So, oh, and then Fibonacci. Okay. So just on that though, um, well, it's on me. I was talking to another girl this morning, literally, you know, your job is to take bits and pieces of the market, right? It's not your job to try and as a new trader to try and get like the highest risk to reward, because if you do that, you're going to miss out on like the little ones that you can like compound that and grow your account. Like stop focusing on trying to catch the biggest move straight away. You know, yeah. like there's no, you just, you got to learn to walk before you can crawl. Um, there's a chat, there's a question in the chat from my biggest brother. My biggest brother is on here. He's learning. <laughs> yes. This makes me so happy. If you were going to base your TP on structure, where would you take it on this current chart that you have on your screen now? For these, well, for the cell, again, it would just you you could argue that the take profit would be here for a sell and then if it was for the buy it would probably be here just again off of previous highs previous lows looking at the structure maybe even here i mean we can go further and further back but that is what take again structure based take profiting is to me this doesn't make sense this is what i used to do because i just wanted to catch pips and make money whatever the hell that means and then I stopped doing that. And then 
again, started, you know, oh, okay, this is how much every pip is actually going to count for. And all I need is X amount so I can stop being in that trade to get into the next one. Because again, that's how you actually scale. You want to figure out the strategy that you're using, but you want to be able to implement it all of the time. At least for me, I want to be in and out of trades as quick as possible. I don't want to sit with trades open for weeks and just it's just riding so deep in profit and how great this is because you want to know what happens. You stop trading and then you get into this euphoric mode of like, look how good this swing trade that I'm taking is. You never designed it to be a swing trade in the first place. It just happened to be a trade that you take. It goes deep into profit and then you literally stop trading because you're just obsessed with how much money you're making on that one trade. Because again, you just want to catch pips and make money, whatever that means. So there is no, there is no structure to what it is that you're doing. So again, if the numbers aren't there and you don't know what you're going for, then I have like, what are you doing? You're just wasting time playing this game of catching pips when the pips don't mean anything. I mean, they could, yeah, absolutely. But then the the losing pips as well, the ones that um, you know, obviously hurt you, the the losses can mean a lot too. So, are you going to waste three months? Of, not waste. I shouldn't. I don't say that. Not. I don't say. I don't want to use the word waste for it, but took me three months to learn this lesson because I built an account up for pretty much three months and then lost it all in one night. It happens. But that was the lesson that taught that to me because I was like, I, I finally realized that, that, that it, that it was me. And I let three months of work go down the drain in one night just because I had no, I had no congruency with anything. So cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Fib. Oh yeah. 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 So, okay. Fibonacci has a bunch of things just, just to be clear, I'm not going to overcomplicate this for you because all I'm just going to do is tell you, but Fibonacci is a mathematical sequence. If you don't know about it, it's literally in everything. It's, it's, it's in our, it's, it's in us, it's in weather, it's in zebra print, it's literally everywhere in nature, in architecture, in math, in trading, in literally every single aspect you'll find it. In trading, you'll see over here on the left-hand side, fib channel, fib wedge, fib spirals, circles, time zones, retracement, trend-based fib extensions, and all of these other things. I want to tell you right now that these are all pretty much the same, just information presented differently. Just to let you in on that, but don't worry about that because this is what you're asking about. These levels right here and all of the, um, you know, all of these initial levels that at least come on the default for the Fibonacci right here, the 0 0.236, 382, 5, 61, 8, 71, and the 78, 6 right here. And then of course one, is the standard usually that everybody knows point of this is of course to look for and let me actually just actually put it on the chart instead of just draw it right there really quick so here let's just take it from this wick all the way up to this wick right here and then cascade it out and then what do we of course start seeing is all of the different bounces and taps and moves away which is why this matters away from these Fibonacci levels. No matter where you draw it, you're going to always find these patterns because this is inherently how the markets work. Again, I highly recommend that you guys go back uh, to the recording that I did tonight. It literally really gets into this one specific question as well, uh, if you're curious about it. But you will always find places in the market where it's obviously redirecting itself. And Fibonacci is a wonderful tool to give you more confirmation of where the market can obviously redirect itself based off of whatever uh, Fibonacci level it's hitting. But the only thing I want to add to that, though, is all of these levels that you see here on the um, just what's on the screen right now, I could flip just as much as these fibs are here. I could flip this, make it different somehow. This is not necessarily. Hold on. 
Okay, there we go. So then I could, of course, just cascade this out right here and go from that high to low. And then the numbers that we find, and I know you probably can't see this, I'm sorry, but now that I have the uh, Fibonacci level upside down, actually, no, I don't. I meant to do that, I'm sorry. Give me just two seconds, sorry about that. Let's go from here to here now. All righty. So there's one. All right. So now, now I have it going from the low to the high. Same thing that you're going to find, though. More Fibonacci respect all over the place. Just because it's hitting the 78.6 like this, just a second ago when it was flipped upside down, it was hitting the 38 too. This is how math works and how the markets literally operate on a algorithmic level that they're constantly using these math formulas to be able to move and push price to specific areas in the market where the money is sitting. And then this is of course where the market will end up going. So again, to keep it simple, you want to use Fibonacci when you were identifying potential points in the market to where it can obviously redirect itself based off of whatever it is that you were you know, already coming to the conclusion with of a sell, for example, let's see if Fibonacci obviously agrees with that or disagrees with that based on the structure. So hopefully <laughs> that answers it as easy as, it, easy as I can right now. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different explanation for Fibonacci. I mean, people use it differently. Um, it is a tool, right? So it, it's not an indicator. It is a drawing tool. So everybody uses tools in a different way. So you'll get a different answer. But again, I'm just telling you that regardless if you have these Fibonacci lines or the, you know, the uh, retracement lines, these right here, whether you have them on the screen or not, they're there. And that's what I always try to get people to understand with Fibonacci lines is that just because you do not literally have them visually identifiable on a screen just because you haven't put something on the screen to identify it does not negate the fact that they are still there. So always remember that even with what the market is doing right now, whether it chooses to go up or down on USDJPY on this London session tonight, I promise you there is going to be plenty of things that we can confirm to as to why the market would redirect itself from right here. If you understand what I'm saying, don't get stuck with the devil in the details kind of thing. Move and flow with the market, not necessarily trying to checklist off everything, if that, if that makes any sense as well. Because you can really paralyze yourself by, I need to have 15 different things telling me that it's a sell in order for me to sell. Don't do that because that's not going to help you. So would you say to sum that up, that FIB, um, just like a, a normal FIB expansion level, uh, mm -hmm. basically just like, you know, a TA calculated between, you know, highs and lows of price, um, basically. And it's just, you know, always a projection of psychological levels. Is that what you would sum that yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, where the market can potentially redirect. If it's going down, where the market can start to move up, turn around and start going the other way. Potentially for us, opportunity. Opportunity to potentially get into trades. That's what they're for. Cool. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, now, there is a question in the chat. So we've only got about five more, which is awesome. I hope you guys are getting so much value out of this. Um, so... John would like to know, which is a very good question. How important is it to be disciplined when trading? Uh, yeah. So, you know, just railing that home with every single, you know, point to this. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Discipline is planning. Discipline is executing that plan. So here's the alternative. If you fail to do those things, then quite literally what you're doing, sitting in a chair or wherever you are, you are looking at these lines going up and down and your only driving force is that you just want to make money. There is no answering that. What does that even mean? Yes, you can be here and yes, you can be looking for buys and sells in the market, but if there is nothing that is supporting that and going behind that and actually pushing you, 
you're literally just wasting time because it's not going to be what you want it to be. All of us understand what trading can do for life and all of the amazing opportunities that it can present. Well, that's not going to happen by just saying, well, I just want to catch pips and make money because that is what the undisciplined person is doing as opposed to the disciplined person that literally knows what every single trade that they take represents and how much further it's going to put them ahead or how much further it's going to put them behind and being okay with it, of course. But then again, making sure that they actually do that because remember just as much as you can do the right thing, you have just as much ability to do the wrong thing. And if you allow it to be so, then the wrong thing can be catastrophic. All For people who have been trading long enough, every single one of us have a story <laughs> that we could tell you about that one particular night where I dropped everything and just started over leveraging on every trade and lost it all. AJ. There was a night. <laughs> Go ahead. AJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. There was a night where I made 1800% on an account. But do you want to know the crazy thing? I stopped trading that day, fell asleep, and woke up the next day excited beyond belief that I was going to make another 1800%. That in retrospect to me now, I could not believe how stupid I was to think that that was just going to consistently continue to happen. Because I'm telling you guys, I genuinely convinced myself that that was just going to be my life now. I was just going to flip 1800% every, not necessarily 1800%, but just an exuberant amount every every single night that I was just going to take $100, flip it into 10000 and then 10000 to $10 million just, you know, like no obstacles at all. And just, all, you know, all the way up to the top. That is obviously genuinely what I believed, not the case, obviously. So discipline is the alternative to that. You either play in that little playground and mess yourself up for as long as you need to in order for you to realize that what you're doing is happening, or you resonate with what this call is literally about, what we've been talking about, and then don't make the mistakes that me and SJ and Zach and Jenna, so many people have already made and move around that completely. Even though you haven't, again, gone through the personal experience, can you hear, hey, do not trade on a live account because you're not ready for it and actually not do it because somebody else actually told you and they're looking out for your best interest because that's what they're doing. Or you will be like me where you say, uh-uh, I'm a legend. I'm literally godly at trading. Let me just throw in all of the money I have and let's throw it at the wall and hope it sticks because that's the epitome of what you're doing as opposed to, again, discipline, which is number management and emotional management. That's all it is in trading, at least. Mm -hmm. The discipline that is – and following your plan – so, there, yeah, there's other things, but again, time management, emotional management, and number management is what it all comes down to. Yeah. So, even before you guys do go live, um, like, it's one thing to come on the charts and, you know, start charting up, but, you know, you guys know what to look for when you're learning these concepts. So, start putting together a trading plan. Like, that is legit like your Bible, right? Um, please, if you want to go live, produce a tra trading plan. Do that on demo first. You know, you want to have like at least a hundred trades documented in your journal before you're going live, right? There's no point you're going live until you've got a consistent, profitable, you know, method happening for yourself that you are following to a T. Um, that way, you know, when you come on these calls and you can be like, SJ, Mike, Zach, I'm really struggling with this, this and this. And we're going to be like, cool, well, can you show us what you've done? And if you've got nothing to show, we, you, what you don't track, you can't measure, right? So yep. it's really important that you are doing this correctly. Like we're not here to gamble. If you want to gamble, take your money to the toilet, do a shit on it, flush it. Do something else with it. Don't put it in a live account because it's just, you're not ready. Let me ask all of you guys that are here right now, especially the new ones. If you were to get into a trade right now, do you know in regards to your account, how much you're willing to gain and how much you're willing to lose on this very next trade, yes or no? 
just answer that question. I'm, I'm curious, I wanna know. If you do, awesome. If you don't, I have to ask you, what are you doing? Why, why even get into a trade if it means nothing? Because that's, it, it literally won't mean anything to you. If you do not do these things, you will spend years potentially like I had to, to figure this lesson out the hard way. That you, it's like you go into a gun range and you point the gun down the range, but you turn your head the other way, but you didn't even put a target up in the first place. So you're looking the wrong way, aiming down a gun range at a target that doesn't even exist. But despite that, you're still trying to hit your target. Do you see what I'm saying? That's the logic of what you're doing. There is no consistency. There is nothing to be found from that because it is gambling. At the end of the day, you're just blue or the red button, black or red. It's the same, you know, do if you approach it that way, it's going to pay you that way. That's the, there is no, you know, and when, when, and I just saw that question, how do you recommend a journal, electronic or handwritten? I do both because both serve functions, risk management and the numbers much easier to do on an Excel or an Excel spreadsheet than trying to write down all of the numbers for that specifically. The spreadsheet, you know, has the formulas behind the boxes and stuff that do all of the heavy lifting of the math for you. And then the trading plan, all of Is my frozen or am I? That, am I frozen? Oh, there you go. Yeah, you, go. you froze for a bit, yeah. Sorry about that, but yeah, personally, I choose both. I mean, you can always transition one to the other, but yeah, I have you a, absolutely um, do both. Um, like a, a journal thing, if you guys want it. It doesn't yes. have little things in it, or maybe it does. I'm not sure. But I have. I have one. I have one that they can have too. It okay. does shows all of the compounding. Yeah, it's risk management calculators. Guys are on every single website. Yeah. There's literally a hundred thousand of them. There's no shortage of that at all. You will be able to find it like that. Do make sure you're doing those things, especially for the new ones. Because yeah. if not, there's no conversation to be had. Stinu app, um, S-T-I-N-U, is also a really good app um, for that as well, guys. Mm -hmm. um, now, there was a uh, question for Stephen. Um, where is it? Scrolling back. Any resources that are good to backtest strategies, i.e. pricing of pairs? Um the best tool is the backtesting, uh, the, the replay feature, excuse me. You can literally delete candles and then print them out one by one. How better to do this than to literally simulate price action? You go to a pair that you don't know and then you delete all of the candles and then you literally say, oh, okay, well, this is USDJPY. This is where it happens to be. What do you think it's about to do here? And then you decide whatever you think and then play it out yourself. Did you win or lose the trade? Now do it again. You think it's going to buy or sell? Then you buy or sell. Do you win or do you lose? You see what I'm saying? You can literally simulate the market for as long as you want. Go, go on to a chart that you don't trade or that you're familiar with. Maybe you're not familiar with any, so it wouldn't matter which chart you're doing it with, but you can literally simulate price action. But to be clear, this is on TradingView and this is the pro feature. You can still, sim from the best of my knowledge, when you are on an account on TradingView that isn't paid for, you're on the free account, I think you can only do that on the daily. But it doesn't matter if you're doing it on the daily or the one minute or whatever. You'll still be able to practice with price action, which is the only thing that matters. So. It doesn't matter if even if you're just on a free account for trading view, you can literally delete price uh, and, and simulate it yourself. You obviously want to make sure that you don't know what's going to happen because, of course, that just negates the entire simulation itself. If you already know what's going to happen, then you're not going to, you know, obviously be getting any real work done there. So when you don't know what's going to happen, 
you can you could literally run out just like what SJ said. You don't have to take a hundred trades. You could literally do exactly what I'm talking about here. Go all the way back to I don't know 2009 on USDJ, like somewhere way, 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 way back here, for example, then jump down to the hourly chart and then off you go and starting to simulate all of this. And then there you go. You can start simulating and get all hundred of those trades in. Uh, do you need advanced for the, a, I'm pretty sure you need pro and above. Yeah, so Zach it's just like said it as well. Month. It's cheap as. It's what? It's only like $11. Oh yeah, if you're serious about trading, TradingView Pro is like not even a conversation in my in my opinion. I I mean, not an affiliate for TradingView or anything. I'm not getting paid to say that or anything like that. This is just a genuinely amazing trading platform. Broker data and that kind of stuff that's a whole other conversation. The platform itself is incredible. And in fact, if you guys um will wait if you don't have it yet, and maybe money's tight, wait until our Thanksgiving. Do y'all know when our Thanksgiving is? Is it like known out there no idea. In, in Australia? It's in November. It's November. Um, anyways, Black Friday. I don't know if y'all know what Black Friday is, but um, Black Friday, Trading View always, 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 every year since it's been out has always had a Black Friday sale. And it's like, I think 60% off or something like that. It's ridiculous for a year. So wait until Black Friday, which is in about four or five months from now. And then uh, you'll be able to get it. Or yeah, you'll be able to get it six months from now. and Or five months from now, excuse me. Can we go month to month then get the discount? Yeah, I think so. Don't quote me on that because I literally look at the, the payment screen on TradingView one time a year. <laughs> And then I have no idea what it looks like for people that are on, this is what it looks like for people on a free account. I mean, you just make incognito window trading view. I have no idea what this looks like. And just craziness probably. Yeah. That's what you guys are potentially looking at. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You'll get through all of this. And that's probably another thing that I should have said at the beginning of the first question. What do you do as soon as you come onto a chart? Delete all of the garbage that they normally put onto every chart ever and then start putting, you know, things in order, in my opinion. Just colors, background, all of that. Just make the environment the way you want. <laughs> Very important because this is ridiculous, in my opinion. I'm just going to say that. Anyways, um, now moving on to the next question, um, we want to talk about correlating pairs. So Mike and I, Mike actually hates the pair I trade. <laughs> he's a he's a yen guy, and I'm a GU girl. So if you don't know what correlation means, it's um basically like a currency correlation in forex is basically um a positive or negative relationship between two separate currency pairs. So a positive correlation means that two currency pairs move in like the same direction, so tandem. And a negative correlation means that um, they move in opposite directions. So for me, I really love um, GU, EU, EG, and um, AU, whereas Mike really loves the yen. And he has his, like he was brought up on the yen, um, which I don't think many people know that. So if you wanna share some bit about that, um, and yeah, it's just some more on correlating pairs and how we can use them to our advantage. Yeah, so if anything's happening on USDJPY, for example, it will be reflective on AU or AJ, one of the two. Very, very beneficial, in my opinion, because if you start to see a move on USDJPY, for example, then you can potentially take advantage of that on AUDJPY. If it is the yen that is obviously moving up or down or whatever is happening in the situation. So, again, the alternative is looking at USDJPY, uh, you know, CAD, peso, and euro, Swiss franc. Stuff that has nothing to do with each other really at all. And they can, there's just really no connectivity with it. So to me, I like 
that you could literally use USDJPY, for example, as a confirmation for a trade for AUDJPY because USDJPY is doing the same thing and that you, then you can at least, you know, really conclude that the yen is the thing that is moving and so you can take advantage of the yen being the thing that is actually commanding the pair on uh, both charts and and you know maybe be able to find a better entry on that other chart that you were looking at for correlation to find a better entry over there for example so the yen the pairs that i specifically trade just like what sj said i was raised on them always really traded them every currency absolutely has for lack of a better term a personality when they like to move how much they move i guess i shouldn't say currency even though it is the currencies but the pairs the pairs definitely have personalities for sure and the more and more and more you watch the same charts the more and more and more it becomes obvious that they really 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 do act similar as opposed to when you look at other things so like the euro for example like uh, with what sj was saying or just any of the European pairs really in general, the pound, the Swiss franc, the yen, all of those, or not the yen, the euro, um, I don't really mess with them due to the way that they move, as opposed to the yen, the Aussie, and the dollar, that I do like the way they move, and it's mostly because it just seems to be clear. I understand it better, as opposed to the pound or to the you know to the euro but that's but that is again that's preference that is not like oh well this is the correct answer and nobody should trade the euro because that's definitely not what i'm saying you will find through time which ones you like best i didn't like gold for a very you know for a really 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 long time we have a history me and gold do but um yeah it um it is something that I look at literally every single day now. So it'll change. But correlation is absolutely something that, in my opinion, if you're not using, you're kidding yourself. For sure. So um, in terms of just to extend on that as to like why and how it could work, it, you know, if you, for an example, um, you know, the positive correlation between two pairs. So say I wanted to go long on EU and GU. If the correlation is currently present in the market, if the pairs um, increase in price, you could potentially increase in your profit. So they're just moving in the same direction, if that makes sense to you guys. So yes, um, I have a correlation chart. If you want that, I can send that to you also. Just hit me up and I can send that to you. Now, we are literally, all of those questions have um, come through in like multiple of questions. So there's a lot answered. But the last one I want to I wanna ask you, Mike, is what, where is it? I love this question. <laughs> okay, it is. Where is it? What is what is uh, Mike's five tips to being a successful trader? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> oh boy, um, I have a lot. So which five in particular? Well, number one is following the numbers, as we've thoroughly gone through. Um. Number one, or that would be number one. Number two would be to remove your emotions out of trading as much as you possibly can. How do you do that? Number management. When math is doing your take profit and your stop loss and your lot size for you, it's a lot easier to not involve yourself with that part or that aspect of trading uh, as opposed to saying, oh, look, I like where gold happens to be right now and I want to buy, what should my lot size be? What should my take profit be? What should my stop be? That is where emotion can 100% be plugged in because your lot size is going to come down to how confident you are or aren't in that one trade. Three would probably be environment in order to just become a better trader in general. I think if your environment's not conducive, you need to change that. And obviously make it conducive if you were trading, like let's say if you were probably not right now, but if you were in a Starbucks, for example, and it was just in and out, in and out, in and out, people are yelling, you know, a bunch of noise and you can't concentrate. This is obviously not going to help you. So 
it is a very, very relevant thing. It's easy to check off the list and make sure that your environment's good. But if it's not, you're battling things for no reason. For, hmm, let's see, I would say probably organization on your charts as well. You know, not just physical organization, but technical organization as well. I guess I'll count that as four. Um, you know, making sure that your charts are okay and that you can see everything and that you know what is going on because you definitely don't want to get paralysis from analysis of just a billion things on the screen, like uh, charts with a ton of, I don't know, drawings, I guess. Let me see. I'm just kind of funny here. I should probably put four charts, I guess. Um, it's, it's like a meme. I don't know. I, I don't know how to ask that to Google to get the picture I'm trying to show here. <laughs> Anyways, it's just with when there's literally just a thousand things on your chart like that. There we go. Something like that. Just if this is what your chart looks like, delete everything and start over. This is just as, again, just as much as your physical environment is important. If your charts look like this, I mean, can you, can you see what's going on here? Like what is happening? This is crazy. <laughs> so that would be for, uh, oh yeah, I found it. Can you see it? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Um, and then number five. Hmm. So we have number management. We have, uh, you know, emotional management. We have physical environment, technical environment five i mean trading your trading plan falls in my opinion kind of within the first category i guess goals you know what it is that you are wanting not even just the financials the the um you know the goals that i was talking about with your account growth and compounding and things like that but also identification of what it is that you're doing this for and personally, I wouldn't say bills. I wouldn't be saying that you want to make money because you want to make money. Why are you wanting to do this? And again, I personally wouldn't really say, oh, I'm doing it for my family or I'm doing it for my children. Even though, of course, if that is you, that is absolutely 100% important and perfectly okay. But that is your why. Why are you doing this? The why that I'm saying is, what do you want out of life? Assuming that family's taken care of, kids are taken care of, like money is not the issue. What do you do with the time and the money that you have earned for yourself? If, if, if here, and I'll stop sharing. If that makes any sense to you guys, why are you doing this? And I think that that's really important. Again, different from your, your, your why, like be greedy you want a yacht do you want a lamborghini do you want like you know what do you want and i think if those the you know things are kind of clear i think that that is a wonderful tip because it's a thing it's the destination you know and that's what you're aiming for and that's what you're trying to go to obviously taking care of family and all of that comes first but that's why i'm saying why are you wanting to do what you're doing what are you going to do with the time and the finance, you know, the finances that you earn for yourself. Passion. That's what it is. Passion. Make sure you know what your passion is. Because if I were to ask you right now, what is your passion in life? Like, why do you live? Why do you get up every single day and do what you do? And if you have no answer to that question, there's a problem. I can answer it like that. No problem. It's music. Mine's music. I, I get up every single day because of music. I, I really do. It's crazy. It's crazy as it sounds. I'm completely obsessed with music and video games. They are just my favorite things to do. Always have been not even a secret or a mystery to me. SJ, you could probably do the same thing. Like, what are you passionate about? Boom. I know exactly what it is. A I surfer is surfing. 100%. I uh, did a post about this today. Like, why do you do what you guys do? Like, you all have jobs. Um, you know, hopefully you have plans of, you know, maybe, you know, we, everyone, the world needs people with jobs. Don't get me wrong. But 
Um, you know, there's, there's a reason why you're trading, right? And I literally wrote a post on this today about why do you do what you do? Like, why do you have the job that you have? Is it just to pay your bills? Um, having vision for yourself is so, so important and people lack vision, which is why you've got people like me, Mike, uh, Zach, Jenna, Josh, that are here for you to, who have, you know, walked, who have, you know, we're, we're literally paving this path for you to just walk down, just stick with it, guys. You're going to have shitty days like John, Johnny, he said he's going to need a psychologist, probably. <laughs> 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 probably um, you know, Elle wants a big backyard for her dog like whatever your why is you need a why you've got to know why you're doing this otherwise you're not going to stick with it okay and that's yeah. why every single one of you who I've brought on um, to this platform I've asked for your why and the reason I've asked for your why is because of that you're going to have moments of doubt you're going to have these days where you are lucky he's going to call me and be like SJ I fucking hate doing this I quit I'm not getting it like maybe this isn't for me after all um, maybe, you know, you've got to put a bit of more time into me guys. You literally pay for an education platform that teaches you to be a consistent, profitable trader. You have access to Mike and Zach, these two stellar legends on this call with me tonight, every single day, you have everything you need. My brother wants to buy my sister a new set of earrings. Shut up. He's since I was 13. <laughs> um, so guys have a strong why. If you don't have one, when you get off this call tonight, before you go to bed, write your why out, you know, think to yourself, you know, subconscious, what is it I need to know right now? If you don't have a why, okay, find one. You know, mine isn't some crazy one, I need to retire my parents, like a lot of um, my friends. I don't have a why of that. I just, my why is freedom. I don't want to be stuck in the system. I want to travel. I have the biggest calling for travel. Lucky my older brother's a pilot. And if you can't answer that question, guys, think about how bad that is. Like, it's like, I don't know, like I would be having a, an existential crisis <laughs> if that was the case, because if I didn't have music or games or again, be able to immediately identify why I do what I do, I'd probably go insane to me personally, because you are going to be held to pressure here. The pressure will be put on one way or the other. And if there isn't something there that again is your why and your passion in these things, you will fold because please understand you were asking for a more difficult path of life, but absolutely more rewarding. What's easier is to go to a job and be told what to do and where to be and what time and what to wear. It's very easy to fall back into that because again, that's where we all come from. So understand what you're asking for. You want more time. You want more money. Be ready to pay the price because it's coming. It comes for all of us. But again, once you pay the price, the reward is even sweeter. I, I, was, I was not passionate about trading when I first started. I am, you know, I'm not academic whatsoever. Um, you know, Mike's a math wizard. For me, like math is just not my strong point. Okay. You don't have to be good at math. You just have to be willing to put the work in to learn this. And that's what I had. You know, I was not passionate about it. I found my journey was really quite difficult. Once again, I did not have Zach who's on here, we started pretty much a month of each other um, back in 2016. We did not have what all you guys have now. Okay, Ben. Not even came. close. Mike, do you remember Ben Kane? Yeah. He's on this call. He surprised no, me. No, he's not. He is, he is on the call. And Zach hit me up. He's like, SJ, who's on the call? And I'm like looking and I'm like, my heart was in my throat when we first started. Wow. <laughs> ah, he's back. Well, he's That's on the call. crazy. Back, yeah. Um, like even when Ben started, we did not have access to anything that you guys have now. So if we can make something of ourselves, like the IML Academy was just legit being built. Okay. We had Mike for, um, one call a day, Christopher Derek for the other, um, Christopher Terry to teach swing trading. That's li literally all we had. Okay. You guys have so much at your hands. Take hold of it and just make the most of it. Cause you won't, you're not going to find, you're not going to find this stuff on YouTube. Promise you that. You're not going to find Mike and his nuggets on YouTube. That's why you guys are here. And Zach and I have become the traders we have because of Mike and the trade house. You know, like just put the work in, have a why, stay committed to your vision with this. And I promise you it's going to, no Bryson, there's no free signals. Go to Telegram for that. Um, it will pay off for you. 
So have a why, have that vision. It's going to pull you back to it every single time. Get on Mike's sessions every single day. He will blow your mind, as you know, with the, with the trading psychology. His knowledge is next level, all right? So he's 2 p.m. every day. Zach is 7.30 a.m. Um, daily as well. You can catch the recordings. I highly recommend Mike's session from today. Um, I would love to let Mike go to sleep now. I'm sure everyone has got all of their questions answered. If you haven't, please shoot me a message. Um, you know, this is every Tuesday, okay? We've done a lot of the mindset stuff leading up to these now trading calls. And the point of these is to get you guys understanding, all right? You guys have everything you need in the platform. Trust me, you do. Just be patient with your journey. Um, and these calls are just an extra. You know, Mike just pours his love into us every single week. Um, and it's so appreciated. So appreciate you all. Thank you all so much for getting on. Thank um, you, guys. Nice. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. This is recorded as well because I know you're going, probably going to want to um, tune back into this. So I will upload that in the next day or two and I'll post it in our discords. All right. So thank you all so much. And thank you again, Mike. Get some rest. Awesome. Y'all have a wonderful rest.